Hello, everybody um, from at Foss Asia. My name is Colin Charles. I'm here to give you um, a quick recording of MySQL 8 versus MariaDB Server 10.4. First recording actually failed. So this is my second attempt at doing it. Uh, so um, here to talk to you about MySQL 8 versus MariaDB Server 10.4. I've been in the um, MySQL world for more than 15 years. Uh, I have active relationships with Codership, makers of Galar Cluster, as well as Proxy SQL, founding team of MariaDB Server, uh, formerly of MySQL AB, worked at Percona. So I've basically been around uh, the block quite a bit. In terms of licensing, uh, these slides are obviously fully CC licensed. So um, yeah, go for it. So what is compatibility? Basically, it's a state in which two things are able to exist or occur together without problems or conflict. Why it matters is because MariaDB Server is the default in many Linux distributions. And uh, this is slowly, of course, changing because uh, if you uh, sent a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, or um, you'll find that it ships both uh, MariaDB as well as uh, MySQL. Uh, that's because you know things are obviously different. Uh, but if you use CentOS 7 or Red Hat Enterprise 7, it only comes with MySQL 5.5, uh, MariaDB 5.5 as a default, sorry, not MySQL. There's no MySQL at all. Uh, of course, it's abundantly clear that MariaDB server is not MySQL which is, uh, again, why you're starting to see Amazon, Azure, and Alibaba offer different services. Expect always incompatibilities between the two. Now, when it comes to licensing, MariaDB server is GPL v2 only. MaxScale is business source licensed. Uh, it is uh, not an OSI approved license. Proxy SQL is uh, GPL v3. Um, column store, again, GPL v2 because of history. Uh, but many of the tools that make Column Store usable and useful are uh, actually business source licensed. So you want to maybe uh, think twice about that. MySQL, of course, is community and enterprise reasons, just like MariaDB, Percona follows GPL v2. When it comes to support, uh, what does the ecosystem and landscape look like? I don't know. Uh, if, you, if you go to a third-party company that's not MariaDB, Percona, or MySQL, would you find that they are willing to support the solution that you are providing? Uh, that's what that's very important. So third party companies include like Pythia and, uh, or you know local local companies and so forth. Uh, who does training? Who does certification? Both MySQL and MariaDB do certification. Percona doesn't do certification. Being an open source conference, uh, community contributions are extremely important. In terms of who actually uh, takes the most contributions, I'd say it's MariaDB because you can put it on the the MariaDB contributor agreement or the BSD new, followed by Oracle, uh, MySQL which has the OCA, and then followed by Percona. Uh, Percona being very much more interested in only solving the customer problems. When it comes to governance, uh, you know, MariaDB Corporation is a for-profit corporation. It's been funded a lot. It's on its third CEO, um, not a founder CEO. It's it's raised over ninety-eight million dollars. Um, it obviously has a foundation, but it's also heavily dependent on venture money. Uh, so you you know, I always ask, you know, how many times things like websites change, management change, and be careful about vendor lock in open source. Comes to releases, MySQL, of course, uh, you know, in the middle is the is the sole 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 release releaser. But uh, MariaDB does release once every year. MySQL once every two years plus. Percona, you'll notice, is actually lagging behind in in terms of release time, compared to um, compared to uh, MySQL, it can sometimes lag up to eight months behind a release, and that's because it's getting extremely hard to merge MySQL because MySQL. Uh, point releases also get new features. So this is something that's very important to remember with MySQL is that it introduces new features in point releases like 8.0.17, 8.0.16, and so forth. When it comes to installation, uh, it is clear that Percona server follows the easiest installation model because you have a YUM file, you just install a, a RPM, and then you, you're, you're good to go. MariaDB makes you copy and paste, edit a file, then install, because it's got a repo builder. But with MySQL, you have to grab packages. And uh, yeah, this can be kind of uh, vaguely annoying, obviously. Now, when it comes to replication, you notice that it's easier to migrate to MariaDB server, but it's much harder for you to migrate away from MariaDB server. So you can uh, consider kind of like a Hotel California program to receive, check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. Um, and you notice that the GTID variances and MariaDB, when it's attached to slave to MySQL, will just discard the GTIDs and actually create uh, create its own. Now, when it comes to replication, the default binary log format inside of MariaDB is mixed, whereas the default is row inside of MySQL. So you should probably note that you may want to change it because mixed means you get statement most of the, most of the time, uh, or you know you'll get 
row only when statement is deemed problematic. Also, you may want to think about turning on the replicate annotate row events to off because it's on by default, which means that if you get a, a binary log replication, a, a row-based replication, it will also append the statement on the top, uh, which will actually waste binary log space. However, you could also turn on binary log compression, which is unique to MariaDB, and maybe then save some space. Time delay replication is also extremely interesting because um, this is something that's been around uh, for a while, which allows you to have a delayed replica, uh, maybe one hour delay. So if you're doing live code pushes, this might be useful for you, uh, especially if something breaks and you don't want to, to restore. Uh, it was present in MySQL 5.6, but it only arrived in MariaDB 10.2, which is a significant delay in time. Uh, DML only flashback is great. It allows you to roll back instances, databases, tables, to an older snapshot via, came via Alibaba. This is the MySQL bin log tool. Extremely, extremely useful. Also, and uh, I highly, re highly recommend you check it, check that out. Now, when it comes to um, security, MySQL has of course started using something called a caching SHA-2 password, and it actually is not compatible with many connectors uh, unless it's provided by MySQL. So this is something very important to know when you're moving to MySQL 8 is that connector support is extremely, extremely important. Now, MySQL for the longest time it uses something called MySQL native password, which actually Previously uses SHA-1 based authentication and double SHA-1, but uh, then uh, computers became faster. SHA-1 isn't great because uh, you get collisions. Uh, double SHA-1 is also not really considered as secure any longer, though we haven't really seen any break-ins. So MySQL naturally has uh, SHA-2 physics. MariaDB has N25519, which is based on elliptical curve digital signature algorithm. Same as OpenSSH uses elliptical curve uh, by Daniel J. Bernstein. Now, they're not compatible with each other, so you can't migrate users' passwords between the two. Uh, very important to remember that validate password is on by default in MySQL 5.7 and greater, but not in MariaDB. So maybe you want to turn that on because it's actually kind of kind of handy. Um, my Basically, you have the extended slow query log inside of MariaDB. Very, very useful. You have things like a uh, thread pool you have uh, that you don't have to buy MySQL Enterprise for. Threadpool, of course, also comes inside of Perna Server. You have things like table elimination, which allows you to do anchor modeling. You don't get that in any other open source database, uh, generally speaking. Error numbers are 1900 and above. Uh, Percona has taken like 30, uh, the 3000s and above. Things like show processes with progress reporting. So you can actually see if you do an alter table, should you do an alter table and, uh, and go for a cup of coffee or go away for the weekend. Dynamic columns allow you to actually have uh, nice new, uh, col many new columns for each and every row inside of your database tables. Very useful, up to one gigabyte in size. So it's like a NoSQL uh, kind of thing for you. Encryption is of course different. Uh, MariaDB ships a very old performance schema, so don't use it um, because MariaDB prefers you to use information schema. Whereas uh, MySQLs and Percona 8 uh, are excellent per performance schema. Now, this is an example of where you can do the time in microseconds, uh, seeing the stages, the max stage, and so forth, stuff that's not present inside of um, MySQL 8. When it comes to JSON, there is a binary data type inside of MySQL, whereas in MariaDB, you really have uh, blobs uh, with, with handling functions, uh, so to speak. Uh, when it comes to using uh, the X protocol, which allows you to, to use a new port, 33060, uh, MariaDB is missing the functionality for this. And uh, unfortunately, this also means it doesn't work with things like group replication. And uh, you can't uh, actually uh, do um, queries with JavaScript and so forth. So this is uh, one of those uh, key key differences, I think, that, uh, that are quite significant uh, that will drive things to be a little different uh, going forward. Storage engines, um, I'll talk to you only about the cool storage engines like MyRox. MyRox is uh, you know, based on RoxDB, which is a four-core level DB. It's right optimized, focus on endurance of flash devices because it has 10 times right, uh, less write amplification compared to InnoDB. Uh, it's also got better compression than InnoDB and it's got the ability to load data fast, uh, avoiding compaction overheads. In fact, MyRox powers more than 95% of Facebook today. So um, if, you, if you are wondering if it is ever used in production, uh, Myrox is the Facebook storage engine of choice, which is great news for you because you're actually getting huge amounts of benefits from, from them. This is a spider, which is great for uh, transparent sharding and resharding via SQL, so you can partition via range, key, hash, list. 
um, and uh, it, this is um, all via SQL. And of course, there's things like Connect Storage Engine, which allows you to import MongoDB files and um, text files and so forth. It's, it's also uh, fairly cool. The ability to do things like column compression, which is present inside of Percona Server with, this, with dictionary support also. From row, row compression to page compression, you can now create columns that are also compressed. And you can actually uh, see if columns are how they're compressing or decompressing. Invisible columns allow you to remove a dependency to applications. So basically, a column can be added to a table without hiding them from the application, which may fail to run. Keep historical columns not needed by applications anymore. Prepare, uh, you know, database level upgrade. So when you do a select star from, as you can see, select star from user, it doesn't show anything unless you explicitly specify the secret column in this example. System version tables. I really, really enjoy this because it's a SQL 2011 standard, stores history of all changes. So you can alter a table to enable, disable, remove system version data. You can make as of queries, which will be on the next slide. So you can select data as a point in time. You can also select between and end to select data between two points. It's great for forensic analysis or legal requirements, data analytics, point in time recovery, uh, to find time step versions of data. Uh, and in this example, uh, I show you that uh, you know a one user uh, called Colin uh, earns a thousand dollars in the marketing department, then gets a ten thousand dollar salary bump, and, and then moves to the engineering department. Uh, and uh, the as of example of that is to see what uh, what uh, he was earning at that point in time, back in time. So. There are, of course, um, things like uh, differences, obviously, like no resource groups, no native partitioning, no timetable storage engine, uh, no no set persist, uh, no uh, the regular expression libraries are different. MySQL 8 uses uh, ICU, whereas uh, MariaDB uses PCRE, but everyone's gotten rid of Harry Spencer's uh, library. Uh, but you know, I think there are many, many features in MariaDB that outweigh the differences uh, or, or whatever is lacking, so to speak. But at the same time, we have to remember that differences also mean that uh, things like uh, not having a GTID available in the OK column, for example, is is a, is a real big issue. So um, you know you can find that tools like Proxy SQL can do do interesting things because it has uh, OK packet uh, GTID in the OK packet, but it is missing inside of um, things like uh, MariaDB. So you can do consistent reads and ad adaptive query routing based on global transaction ID tracking, which you can't do inside of, say, if you use MariaDB. So you have to know your, the, the pros and the cons the, of, of which server you end up choosing. Of course, it's also very important to note that MariaDB is a, it, it, while it is still considered a drop-in replacement, can use can read your my.cnf, um, can basically use valid MySQL. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an easy upgrade, but migrating back may not necessarily always work. And when it comes to clustering, MySQL 8 uses group replication with NDB cluster, MySQL shell, a MySQL router, it's all one package you can get and MySQL shell can configure your, your InnoDB cluster and the router. WebSphere 10.4 ships Galera cluster rolled into it. It's uh, configurable again via my.cnf, but you don't have the tools like shell and there's no proxy uh, built in. So you still have to download like MaxScale or proxy SQL. Percona server uses Galera cluster. It, it does ship uh, in HTTP cluster a proxy SQL admin tool as well as proxy SQL. So if you're looking for an out of the box clustering solution that just works, PXE actually is, is, is pretty good. But uh, it, the development definitely lags behind what you see inside of MariaDB server as well as code ship directly. So Galera is now at version 4, which is available inside of MariaDB server 10.4, and code ship obviously has a release. But uh, Percona server is still uh, not, 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 not uh, is still using Galera 3 uh, in production use cases. And of course, uh, when it comes to proxies, uh, MySQL recommends router, MariaDB server recommends MaxScale, Procon recommends proxy SQL. Proxy SQL works with all of the above, and it's like the Swiss Army knife for DBAs. It works uh, generally uh, with with everything everywhere. So uh, with that, I, I actually compressed this 25 minute talk into 15 minutes because this is now the second recording I'm making. Uh, and uh, I will always be available via email uh, or Twitter. So feel free to drop me a line. Uh, I have been have a com very comprehensive resource. So please watch watch Twitter and, and the blog for uh, further information. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Thank you.